I'm Carrie Sundra with Alp and Glow Industries, and today I'm going to show you how to solder using lead-free solder and a minimum of basic tools and supplies. There are a lot of different tools that help with soldering, but today we're focusing on the absolute basics that you'll need to get started. Those are a soldering iron with a stand, a tip cleaning sponge, solder, masking tape, and something to solder. Your soldering iron should be a pencil style, at least 60 watts of output, and able to heat to at least 400 C for lead-free solder, though we prefer soldering with our iron set in the 425 to 450 C range. In F, that's a minimum of 750, though we prefer working around 800. Your tip should be relatively pointy, but we prefer a slightly blunt tip, which we'll talk about more in a bit. You'll also need lead-free solder with rosin core. Around 0.6 millimeters in diameter is a good size for beginning projects. Finally, you'll need a way to wipe off your tip. We like dry brass wool sponges better than wet sponges for prolonging tip life. You'll also need something to solder, like our Happy Rain Cloud Kit. Before grabbing your iron and diving in, it's helpful to know a bit about how soldering works and how to set yourself up for success. Make sure you're comfortably seated with the soldering iron in easy reach of your dominant hand and the solder within easy reach of your other hand. Adjust your board so the component you're soldering is comfortably angled towards your soldering hand. An angle of 30 to 45 degrees tends to work best. Avoid the temptation to line up components square to the table. If you're reaching around the board awkwardly, it'll be harder to position the tip of the soldering iron. Move your circuit board instead of your hand. Tape your circuit board down so it doesn't move. With more practice and dexterity, you can use another finger on your solder holding hand to also hold down the board but it's easier to learn if the board is firmly attached to the table and doesn't wiggle around. The key to making a good solder joint is to remember that solder flows to the hottest part. On the tip of the iron, you might notice that the solder doesn't stick to the very tip, it pulls a little bit above the tip. That tells you that the tip of the iron is not the hottest part. Solder with the side of the iron instead, where there's more surface area and heat transfers better. This is also why we like slightly blunt tips better they remain a little hotter than pointy tips and have more surface area to make heat conduction better and the process of soldering easier. Rest your hands against the surface of the table so that they're nice and stable. Place the side of the tip of the iron against the lead and on the pad. Pressure on the pad should be light but steady. At the same time, add solder with your other hand, also stabilizing it against the table. After a brief second, the solder will melt and flow to the pad. If it's not fully flowing around the pad, Move the iron to guide the flow, all the while adding a small bit of solder. After it's flowed, remove the solder first, then the iron. Look at that nice joint. Before putting your iron down, coat the tip with a blob of solder. This protects it from oxidation and will help it last longer. When you pick up your iron again, wipe off the tip to start with it clean. Soldering happens pretty quickly. It only takes a couple of seconds to make a nice solder joint. Let's review what happens. The tip of the iron simultaneously heats up the pad and component lead and melts the solder. The flux core inside the solder helps keep everything clean and flowing smoothly. And the molten solder both transfers heat to the pad and then flows around the pad and up the lead of the component. A good solder joint should cover the whole pad, flow up the lead a little, and look shiny while liquid. When lead-free solder cools, it crystallizes a tiny bit and looks a little bit dull. This is normal and okay. A perfect solder joint will have concave sides, but if yours is a little more blobby, it's okay. It's better to have a little too much solder to begin with than not enough. Here's an example of joints with different amounts of solder. On the left is a joint with too little solder. Just add more to this joint. The joint in the middle is a good example of the right amount of solder. The joint on the right has a bit too much solder and is in danger of touching the pad next to it. When you start, most of your joints will probably have a little too much solder, but as long as they're not touching another pad next to it, it's okay. Your circuit will still work, and your timing and dexterity will get better with practice, and you'll have just the right amount of solder in no time. If you accidentally remove the iron before the solder, the solder will stick to the joint. This is no big deal, just use the iron to melt the solder and pull it away. I tend to wipe up the leg with the tip to guide any excess solder away from the pad. If your soldering is balling up on the leg and not flowing to the pad, you're probably not touching the pad with the tip. 
Just touch the solder again so it flows, and drag it down to the pad, making contact with the pad. You should be able to feel when the tip touches the pad, and you can hold it on the pad with light pressure for up to three seconds. More than that and you risk damaging the pad, though through-hole pads like these tend to be pretty sturdy. You might notice that some pads take more time and heat to flow than others. It's probably not you, it's probably the circuit board. When a pad is attached to a power plane like ground or positive battery voltage, the pad is connected to a larger area of copper that tends to suck away the heat. You might be able to see the traces connected to the pad in the shape of a plus. You can linger a little longer on these joints, and using a higher temperature, a bigger tip, or more solder can help. Very pointy tips like this one can be difficult to use in these cases, requiring more lingering time and more solder than is ideal. Another type of bad solder joint is called a cold joint, like the front one shown here. It looks very dull with large crystals sticking out of the surface, unlike the good joint in the back, which has a very smooth outline. The cold joint will be weaker and have higher resistance. Cold solder joints can be caused by an iron that's not hot enough, but they're most commonly caused by reworking the solder so much that the flux entirely burns off and the solder on the joint gets oxidized and impure. The good news is that you can renew this joint by adding a little flux. A flux pen is a very handy tool for this, and we highly recommend buying one, because you can just paint the joint with flux and reflow it without adding any solder. But if you don't have a flux pen, you can add just a little more solder, because solder contains flux. What is flux anyway? Flux is a necessary part of soldering. It's a mild acid that helps keep things clean and removes oxidation from pads and the tip of the iron, and is needed to make a good joint. You can even use a flux pen on the pads and leads before soldering, and that will make the solder flow even faster and easier. Most solder includes a core of flux, so when you see smoke rising off the tip of the soldering iron, that's the flux burning off. Speaking of fumes, should you be breathing that stuff? It's okay to get a few whiffs of solder fumes, but you shouldn't breathe it for an extended period of time. The mild acidity can cause throat irritation or headaches. If you work in a ventilated area and develop a habit of holding your breath for short periods while soldering, you can solder without additional equipment. But if you're going to be doing a lot of soldering, consider buying a small fume extractor. You'll notice that rosin flux leaves a yellow-brown residue, and you don't have to clean it off, but if it's left for a long time or in humid environments, it can eventually cause joints to corrode. And your board just looks nicer without burnt flux residue. You can easily wipe it off with 90% or higher isopropyl alcohol, available at any drugstore, and either a paper towel or Q-tips. Now that you've learned to solder, go make something! There are many soldering videos out there, and you might have heard different information or seen other materials being used in them. That's okay! We've made this one specifically for beginning lead-free soldering, which uses higher temperatures and makes joints that aren't as shiny as leaded solder. We're also using solder with a rosin flux core instead of a no-clean core because rosin is a little more active and holds up to heat better, so we find it's better for beginners. We didn't use many tools because we wanted to show you the least expensive way of getting started. Our basic setup, the soldering iron, stand with tip cleaner, and the lead-free solder cost a total of 45 bucks. But there are some tools and materials that make soldering a little easier, like the flux pen and the helping hands. We're making more episodes on the variety of tools and materials you can use, so hit that subscribe button if you'd like to learn more about the different solders, fluxes, and more types of helping hands and magnification. We're also coming out with a video on desoldering and fixing your mistakes. Lastly, we're monitoring the comments, so feel free to leave us questions or let us know what other soldering techniques you'd like to see. Thanks, and see you again soon.